on this uh, on this call today, what we want to do is talk about EOS Bridge. We're very very excited about this, and we're finding out that there's very good ways of where companies are are saving money and reducing their mainframe costs. Um, it's the group of people uh, like Byron, uh, John Scagnelli, and I that will be doing this. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, my name is Jim Guthrie. I am the account manager for the Midwest and West. Byron Maynard is the technical account manager, who I'm sure you're all familiar with. And then John Scagnelli uh, handles the sales on the East Coast. Um, so we're very, very excited about this um, because what we're talking about is Bridge. And Bridge is not just a tool, but it's a way to help manage a hybrid environment. And uh, before we kick things off and talk about the agenda, I will say that if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to type them in. Uh, we will have a Q&A period at the very end of the, uh, at the, very end of the presentation. Uh, this should be very brief. It should go about maybe 20 or 25 minutes. And again, I can't thank you all enough for spending time out of your busy day just to, to dial in for this. Definitely appreciate it. So with that being said, we'll talk about the agenda. And uh, I'll hand it off. Um, well, we'll talk about the, the business expectations and we'll talk about uh, a new product, which we're very excited about, EOS 360. I'll hand it off to Byron, and he'll talk about the EOS bridge, get a little bit technical and talk about the framework, and then uh, highlight some of the benefits that we are seeing from customers that are realizing it from, from bridge. And then I'll hand it off to John Scagnelli, who will give a case study of a customer who has uh, purchased bridge, implemented it, and uh, realizing the, the benefits. So with that being said, we, um, we had the privilege, uh, as you all know, we've been in business for since 1973, and we've had many different customers uh, throughout the globe. And Brian, if you could get to the next slide. And we've been privileged to, to meet a lot of our different clients um, all, through, all throughout the world. We have a lot of clients and customers in the United States. We have them in, in Europe. Um, and there's about a lot of different customers, around four, over 400, who have been strongly utilizing EOS. And we've been privileged to not just know them, but also get in front of the, the CIOs. And we've had some convers great conversations with the CIOs. And what we pulled away from that, those meetings, is that they have four things that they really highlight for, for expectations for their business. The, the first thing is cost. Um, there is a dire need to, to reduce the IT costs, and in, in particular, the cost of the mainframe. So reducing that expense will help companies be able to invest into, into new technologies the other thing, too, is that reducing the cost can be done by asking vendors like us, you know, can we reduce our software, can we reduce our services? But I think that the more practical approach would be is what we're seeing is that a lot of these companies are moving their non-critical load information from the mainframe and moving it to a cheaper environment, the open systems environment. The other thing that stands out for CIOs is simplicity. Uh, CIOs want a company that is simple and easy to work with. Uh, they want to work with products that are very simple and easy to install, to integrate with their very complex IT environment, and simplicity is the key to be able to deliver all the rapidly business requirements set forth. The other thing is security. Uh, companies are confronted with regulations to ensure security of the data. I think we're all familiar with PCI for credit card information, HIPAA for the health inf information, and these regulations have been in effect for quite a while but there comes a time for enforcing these particular regulations, and you have to do that. And then the other thing, too, is that companies need to show progress. The last point that the CIOs really wanted to, to stress is that reliability. Companies want a reliable product that they can count on that meets their business SLA, but also meets their customer behavior. And I think a lot of our customers who have been working with our tech support, I think you're very comfortable and you're very happy with the way and the response time that our tech support responds to you with, with great, clear, concise answers. And not only that, reliability, these companies are looking for companies that, because they're international, because they're Fortune 500, you have to be able to work around the clock. Uh, around the clock. And 24 by 7 is something that we bring to the table, and it's something that CIOs are asking for. So with that, I'll hand it off to Byron to uh, talk a little bit more about EOS 360 and to talk about EOS Bridge. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thanks for that uh, excellent introduction. Um, what we're going to talk about first is just what uh, we call the 50,000-foot view of uh, EOS uh, 360. Uh, EOS 360 is really grouped into five components. 
the EOS server, uh, get back to that uh, after we complete the circle. Uh, it's comp composed of the EOS server, uh, the EOS process, uh, which takes care of all the ingestion, uh, whether it's uh, line load data through a writer, or through the FSS, or through the TCT. And the, one of the newer components is EOS access, uh, which uh, is a replacement for the thin client. Uh, we'll get back to that, uh, that component in a second. Uh, the last two components over here on the left-hand side are the EOS Protect, which takes care of the security and privacy, and EOS uh, Cockpit, which is the, uh, the component that really does the auditing and reporting of uh, EOS and how it's running in your environment. So just to get back quickly to the EOS server, it's the core engine feature of EOS 360. Uh, as you can see, we run on multiple platforms, uh, the mainframe and the open system side. Uh, one of the other features of 360 is the global view, which allows you to look at uh, various EOS environments that you're running throughout your installation. The other component that I want to uh, bring to your attention is EOS access. As I said earlier, it's a replacement for EOS thin client. Uh, it's been written in HTML format. Uh, we are offering uh, mobile user interfaces for iPads and uh, smartphones. Uh, you will be able to use REST web services in your environment should you need uh, to connect some of the uh, environments to, let's say, a customer portal type operation. And one of the other features that we have in uh, EOS Access is an Outlook add-in. Uh, so the users can now look uh, at their reports without logging out and logging into another environment. They can look at it directly from their, uh, their Outlook Outlook uh, environment. So again, EOS is, is composed of uh, five modules. So what we want to do here is uh, discover the EOS bridge. Uh, the idea here, as the slide says, is to reduce your mainframe costs with what we're calling a hybrid module, meaning it's going to leverage the interface between open systems and uh, the mainframe uh, while viewing EOS reports. So I think uh, most of you know this framework. It's the main frame, uh, framework for EOS, uh, but it's now going to show you a couple of different things here. As you know today, uh, through EOS, uh, the EOS server, we capture reports, split and index them, including talks if you need. Uh, that process is then sent through the spool, the database, and archived if, ne if, if necessary. Uh, the online server now provides your business unit owners with the ability to view those reports. Uh, they'll be viewing those reports through the EOS access, um, and it can go through multi-platforms if you wish. Now what we're adding to the picture today is a different uh, framework here. On the left-hand side, we see the same EOS server capturing, splitting, and indexing, indexing reports. For some reason, I here we go. Okay, sorry for the delay here. Let me go back one. I'm not sure what's going on with the screen here, but uh, I Sorry for the delay, folks, here. My machine just went haywire here. Okay. Okay, so here we go. We still capture the report. Sorry for the delay. We still capture, split, and index those reports, process through them uh, through the EOS spool and uh, databases. The bridge now automatically takes that data, including the indexes and the talks and the content of those uh, reports, and puts them over into an EOS 360 environment, running, er, uh, as I said earlier, on a Windows, uh, Unix, or Linux environment. It processes it through the database, it can archive the reports, and then the users can now look at their reports through EOS access, whether it's AFP data streams, PDF data streams, or regular line mode data streams. 
So the difference is we're now capturing the reports on the mainframe, moving them over to an open systems environment, and having the users look at those reports uh, through the open system side. Now to go to the next screen. A more detailed view of what's going on here on the open system side is the report definitions do not have to change. They still remain on, on the mainframe. The user definitions don't have to change. They still remain on the mainframe. We still capture the reports on the mainframe. Once they're captured, uh, as you saw in the previous slide, we now move that data over to an open systems application, whether it's Linux, Unix, or a Windows application. As I said earlier, we transfer all the indexes, the table of contents, the content to those reports are all now on the open system side, which now allows the end users to view those reports from an open systems platform. The idea, you've now reduced the MIPS access from the mainframe usage, you've completely eliminated them by looking at uh, the reports through the open system side. So I guess you're all saying now, you know, how does the bridge help me reduce uh, your mainframe cost? Well, we have another area that we look into. Uh, I think most of you might be familiar with the R4HA, the rolling four-hour average uh, with EOS on ZOS. This chart now shows you a number of things. It shows you in the light blue the non-EOS applications that are running in your environment, uh, the darker blue uh, applications, which is the EOS batch, and the very dark blue here up the top is the viewing of the EOS reports. As you can see, it's more um, concerned with the morning time when people log on to look at their reports and the afternoon just after lunch when they come back in and if any other reports have been captured, they again look at their reports. So here you can see the batch ingestion, which obviously can be scheduled and the EOS viewing, which we as, uh, as administrators and supporters of the EOS environment, we can't control. So there's an R4HA number of 946 here. So we scroll forward, and with the bridge in action, the picture changes. It changes dramatically. Because if you look at the, the top of the peaks that we were looking at before, using the bridge and moving that data from the mainframe over to the open system side, we've reduced that R4HA to uh, 903. What we've calculated is about a 5% savings on the total mainframe MIPS usage. So you're reducing the, contribu the contribution of EOS to MIPS utilization uh, while limiting the changes that are required in your environment because, as I said earlier, what you're doing is moving that viewing data from the mainframe over to the open system side, and the users have no, no difference. It's kind of tra it's transparent to them. So your second question is, well, how do you measure your savings, and how do we get that information? Well, we will come to you, and we will ask you for what, we call the, what they call the SCRT, the Subcapacity Reporting Tool. It's output that identifies the R4HA peaks. We will also ask you for dumps of the SMF records. The SMF records that we're looking for uh, from you are 30, uh, 70, 72, and the five preceding hours to the R4HA peak. Uh, those SMF records are normally address information, uh, excuse me, address space information, processor activity, and just the performance information. So with those two things, in addition to uh, the names of your EOS monitors, which is the EVTs and any started tasks that are running to uh, produce those reports, you provide that to us, and within 15 days, we will provide you with an estimation of the savings that you can really, uh, really realize uh, from implementation of the, uh, of the bridge. So the benefits, obviously you're going to reduce your costs. Uh, because you're now using the open systems platform for report viewing. Uh, you can also archive that data to the open system side if you want. You're improving your efficiency by leveraging the fact that we've already have the definitions. There's no need to redefine any reports. Uh, as I said earlier, we're going to use the same report definitions for distribution to those users, uh, and those, those definitions are already in place, so there's no need to change it. 
uh, you're ensuring the business continuity, so the business stays in flow. There's no disruption of the business flow uh, when you convert and use the uh, the bridge and use the access, RSD access to uh, look at those reports. Uh, the as we said earlier, and I've talked throughout here, the access now is through both. They can still, if they want, look at it through the mainframe uh, through access, or they can look at it through the open system side. Uh, and the fact that they can now, with the use of the global view component, you can now look at multiple EOS environments um, in, in, uh, once all that data is, uh, is captured in EOS. Now what I'm going to do is turn it over to John Stagnelli, who's going to give you a review of the case study. Uh, if you have any questions, as uh, Jim said earlier, please note them in the chat box and uh, we'll answer them. John, it's all yours. Thanks, Byron. That was great, uh, as always. So, again, I'd like to thank everybody for taking some time out to listen to this uh, really cool product that we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a case study of one of the companies that currently uses uh, the, the Bridge product. They're, they're an outsourcer for a uh, banking application, and there's more than 60 banks that, that use this application for them. So typically, what happens in, in in this bank, in this in these banks, and I'm sure in most of your organizations, is people come in in the morning, and everybody wants to see the reports for the previous day. So what that does, it increases the amount of MIPS, and in their case, they had a surge of about 500 MIPS usage, and you know as a result of everybody coming in. You know, and that typically was from about 8:30 in the morning to 11 o'clock in the morning, and it was about eight. Uh, in their case, about 500 MIPS was 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 the delta. So one of the things that Byron spoke about earlier, and and Jim also did, was, you know, the business needs uh, of this company was to reduce the mainframe operation costs, while they also wanted to have an. The ability to manage their solution easily on an open system, and, and while keeping the security and the availability up. The nice thing about the bridge is that what Byron had said earlier: there is no need for retraining of any of your users. They would do their job the same way they do now. They don't know that they're when they request a report and they want to view that report that that report is coming from the ser from the, from uh, an open server it's seamless uh, which in in a lot of cases nowadays people don't want to have to relearn a system there's no need to do that the other thing that um, in the, what we found in the solution was the next slide please uh, so I'm sorry. They they do about 45,000 uh, about 45,000 reports a day, which is about six million pages of, of reports in, in this case study. So after they put the bridge in, they reduced the amount of MIPS in that four-hour rolling average that we talked about by about 400 MIPS, which represented Again, about a 5% savings, uh, mainframe savings. In their case, it was uh, a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year annually that they saved by just installing this product. So this is real dollars. It's real ROI. You can go back to your people and say, hey, listen, I think I can save us uh, a significant amount of money by installing the bridge uh, because now I can reduce by 5% the MIPS that are running on, uh, on, on, currently running on the mainframe. So, it, and it goes back to this cost reduction. And the cost reduction, again, and I hate to, we hate to keep saying it, is you're getting information off of the mainframe and viewing it on the open system, thereby reducing the amount of MIPS that you're consuming. Um, is easy administration, it's you load the product, uh, and the magic within the product allows you to take all that information over and have the users, again, with no training, no retraining of the users to go and access their reports. So 
Uh, next slide. So how do you get started? The best way to get started is, and, and Byron spoke about this earlier in one of his slides, is if you provide us with the uh, subcapacity reporting tool, give us the dumps of the SF, SMF records 30, 72, and 70 for the five hours preceding the uh, off where HA peak, within 15 days we can provide you with an estimation of the savings. And if, if you weren't able to write those down, please send us an email, send it to me or Byron or Jim, and we can uh, uh, help you through this process. So with that, we are, again, we appreciate all your time, and if there are any questions, if you don't want to type them in, we can uh, open the line. Can we open